Hello, it's Gareth from the iMoot team. My great pleasure, or our great pleasure, to welcome Ralph Hengerstock, who's going to talk about Simplify Moodle. Um, Ralph, thank you for your time, uh, for putting this presentation together, and uh, let's enjoy. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Gareth, for the introduction, and thank you all of all the people who are coming here on uh, Saturday. Um, I'm I'm talking from Berlin in Germany, and it's here 9:30 in the evening. And um, I know Andy is also coming from Germany, uh, but but I don't didn't know where the others are coming from. Guido just joined the mid session. He's also from from Germany. Ah, okay, a chat from UK, same time or nearly the same time, and California, okay. Yes, um, <clears throat> let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I'm um, working with Moodle since more than 10 years, uh, coming from the training area, organizational uh, development processes, and since a uh, long time, our company, Eledia, e-learning dialogue, is a Moodle partner in Germany. And with a team of 20, we are offering a lot of services for our clients, actually more than 500 clients, some of them with hosting, some of them with continuous uh, full service um, uh, development uh, of plugins uh, and all the stuff. Um, what I will tell you today in the presentation is how can we simplify Moodle? Is required to simplify Moodle. Um, I started with the idea for this presentation for a long time ago when I had contact with a lot of clients that said, oh, Moodle is complex. Uh, Moodle has much too much functionalities and um, I think we should have a tool with less functionalities. This is one point. Another point was that we found when we had access to the client's Moodle systems, um, then we very often saw that mo lots of the systems were in the original status, with the original configuration, independent if it makes sense for a client and the, the learning situations, the organizational situations, and we said, oh, this is not an optimum of what Moodle can do. And um, so we thought about how can we support our clients. Today we are offering to our clients a service session at the beginning. Each client who is starting uh, has access and uh, can order with us a configuration setting, a session, ses session. Configuration session is typically um, a session from three to four hours online where we configure the systems depending on the needs they have. And in the same process, they are learning a lot about administration. It's not a complex, a complete administration seminar. But it's a one option and the first option for the client to see I can do a lot in Moodle. I have a lot of different options there and um, I can configure it so that I can hide elements that I don't need. I can activate, I can use, work with default settings. And the idea of the presentation here is um, to give some advices, um, uh, to, to show some elements where I can reduce complexity in, in Moodle so that it is easier for people to, to work and to reduce the learning time and the learning curve they have if they are starting with the Moodle system. And um, the presentation that I will show you here, um, originally I have created two years ago. Um, and so you will see uh, some of the screens that are from an elder version in Moodle, but generally the processes and generally um, the look and feel is, uh, is the same, even if some of the icons have changed, but um, generally we have the situation today also, and with all the information you can uh, work here. Um, we will not cover any aspects where you have to program, where you have to change programming. We are, I'm not covering um, elements and functionalities that you have to put into the Moodle system by additional plugins in the moment. We are working with or I am here working here with Moodle system uh, as standard as you can download and um, I will give you some advice. But the first part of my presentation will be um, that I have an introduction 
about complexity and simplification uh, why um, and general some general aspects we have of course we have before we are going into the details um, um, if you have any questions, please start directly into the chat. Uh, put the questions there, and I will uh, try to pick up the questions directly and to uh, put it uh, into the presentation. So then, let me start. Um, is there the only one? Is there only one way in Moodle? Very often, I explain our clients that Moodle is a tool where you have different alternative to do the things. It's not only one option to to handle the things. You can do it very often in different way, and so you can select the way that makes the most sense for you, for your situation, for the organizational processes. And this is very relevant to understand that there is not only one way. And on the other hand, this creates a first element of complexity because different ways are bringing uh, the users uh, to the same result and um, some of them are confused they say okay i want to go one way on the other hand others say okay i like it that i can go different ways because i like it to do it in this way and a colleague in another way but in the awareness of the people, they think, okay, it's complex to handle Moodle. Um, simplification is about reducing complexity. Where comes the complexity from? I've thought a long time about this. And um, at the end, I came to the result that Moodle is complex because the tasks, the um, elements that we want to realize with Moodle are complex. It's, it's not though that learning and teaching is a simple thing. Um, not Moodle is the, 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 the reason for the complexity, but the learning processes are the reason for this. The learning process are very different. We have teachers that have uh, different ways they want to use to do the things, and so they need alternatives. And there is in the same um, um, uh, topic, um, one teacher who wants to do it in a very communicative way, another one will do it with a lot of assignments and very strict processes in the course, and another one wants to do it um, only with uh, uh, links to external side and so on. And if I have a learning tool that wants to support the teacher, he has to offer alternatives depending on the preferred style of a teacher. And so I have to add these alternatives there. Um, sometimes I, I, I heard from the people, I want to have a Moodle system as easy to use like Facebook. When I went to a Moodle, a Facebook page, often I think this is not easy to use. And what easy to use is on a page book, uh, uh, Facebook page is to handle some very simple processes to create a statement, to read a statement from someone else and to make a comment, to put a link into it and maybe also to put uh, upload a file. But then it's the end of the simple, simple functionalities there in Facebook. If I want to have individual aspects there, I have to understand a lot of the system and then it will be complex. And a lot of things you can do with Moodle you can never do with Facebook. Um, and this means a learning management system will be more complex than a tool uh, and a function uh, like Facebook uh, all the time. The other process that is here very relevant is that most of the Moodle system that are running in reality are not configured individually for the needs of the organization. And let's go look more in detail what this means. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of questions that um, teachers are asking there. I have listed some of them here. Um, and they are asking, how can I add it to the Moodle course? And I want to, to do it with Moodle in different ways. 
Um, and uh, this is typically uh, a not very structured process of a teacher if he is designing a course. A lot of teachers are working very intuitively and uh, then I, they are going to the learning platform and select this and select this and select this and copy this from another course, but it's not a, often not a structured process. And then they say, okay, it's complex and we need a lot of time. It would be much easier also for a single teacher if he has a structured process. In several of the training programs we are offering train the trainer courses for teachers, um, we suggest them don't start on the platform, please start on paper. Structure your course on paper, make a concept, define your syllabus, define the order of, of the course elements and which functionality you want or which activity you want to use for which element, which for learning set, uh, to topic, which, which learning um, goals um, and which part of the syllabus. And if you have prepared this and you have a clear picture from it, this is for much easier for you to go to the course and to put it into it and then it will be not so complex for you because you have made a lot of decisions before you are starting designing on the page uh, the learning course here and this is also a point that's very relevant that people are working often not very structured in, in, in the platform. Um, let's go more in, in, in an overview for what is the learning management system offering. A learning uh, management system like Moodle is offering for each single teacher and his colleagues that are also teaching the same topics across the topics or with other teachers, the tools they need, but they, it has to offer the tools for, uh, for, for learning scenarios that are not defined if they are starting with a learning platform. And this is very often. If I'm going into a school and ask teachers, what do you need? I get a wish list. And everyone has a special uh, wishes, um, but there's no coordinated process um, to handle this. And if I'm going through this separate uh, issues here we have um, in, in the slides, we can restructure an introduction process for an organization so that I say, um, let's define it uh, in detail, what you really need, what is not required because you didn't need it. Maybe that you didn't need it in the introduction phase for the first three or six months or first year um, and what the typical scenario is. And then we can create a configuration for you that is covering 80% or maybe 90% of the needs directly and very easily because you understand that and other elements and functionalities that are not required in the moment are in the background or are not available in the moment. And we can do it by, by, by configuration also. But this means that each single teacher knows what he wants to do with a platform, what is the need. That he has coordinated this with the colleagues, he is teaching together the same topics, maybe science, maybe language teaching, maybe sports, uh, whatever. Um, and they have to, to, to together define what they need for their topics. And they have coordinated this on a higher level also with all the colleagues that are uh, teaching other topics in a school and university. And at the end, they have a list of tools and functionalities and processes they really need. And they have also a picture, say, okay, these are the learning scenarios we want to implement in the starting phase in the beginning. And, um, then we can go to the system. But this means that if a system is starting at first, a concept is made in the organization. And not only a technical platform is installed. And this is a point that is very often missing. Um, and um, if you have such a structured process in the beginning, it's much easier to work with a platform and complexity will be um, uh, not, not, not so high. Um, 
So I'm coming back. We need an in individual configuration based on the institutional situation, the process as a concept, and um, this has to uh, be defined in advance before we start to work with the platform. And um, if we do this, then we can go more into the uh, the, the de details. Um, is this idea, is there an alternative? Um, there's a little bit provocative um, uh, idea to say, okay, the LMS has to know intuitively what the teacher likes to do. But I think this is an illusion because nobody can see in the brains of the teachers if he is sitting for the screen and, and, and the keyboard. Um, the other alternative is that a learning management platform has only a very limited functionality. Um, and file upload, assignment and grades and nothing more. And in the market of learning management systems, there are a lot of systems that have only a very limited number of functionalities. And people are asking very often, um, this is not what we want to do with a learning management system. Or after some time they say, okay, we stop working with a learning management system because it cannot do. Maureen, yes. Sure, option number one will be interesting, but it's illusion. I, I think um, we don't want it in reality. Um, but we can discuss it. Let's drink a wine and um, then we can discuss it in, in, in detail. Moodle is very well prepared for this idea of, of the structured way there because it is um, modular. We can work with the different types of modules, and if there, are, if you have uh, some experience with Moodle and as an administrator, you know that especially the plug-in area, but also in other areas, you have access to the activities, blocks, filters, quiz, question, and so on. And you can define what is active, what is inactive, and what are the default settings. And it will be main part now of my present, uh, rest of my presentation that we have a look on the different areas where we can use a modular mod, mod, uh, model of Moodle uh, to configure our system and to reduce the elements there. Let's start with the user registration process. Um, Moodle offers a lot of functionalities. Um, and in the default setting, um, email-based uh, user registration is active. And in most institutions, we suggest to disable these functionalities because they only want access for the participants that are enrolled um, in the school, in the university, as students are registered there. Most of the organizations today have a, have an IT infrastructure, a software where they have the, 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 the users, the students and the teachers registered. And if they have an option to connect this system with Moodle system, it will reduce a lot of manual work, a lot of discussions, and uh, it makes a way much sense because each user data set that I am changing, I have to change only in one system. And if I have an LDAP, an active directory, if I have a database, if I have a student information system or something else, I connect, can connect it in, uh, with Moodle. And then I um, have a very simple way to handle it because this data are up to date and uh, on daily or weekly uh, base, the data can be shared with the Moodle system. Um, our technical colleagues have a, a lot of discussion with the clients and today they are uh, suggesting most of the time to use web services as it is technically possible because this is a, a very neat and, and clear uh, process and it can be running this processes in time. And then we have a leading system. A leading system is a student information system that has something similar um, and uh, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, reducing
And complexity can also mean that we use a functionality like single sign on. If we have a system that students, teachers, um, employees in the organization um, are logging in into a portal on daily work and get access to different tools, then it makes also sense to use this functionality that they log into Moodle also. And this makes it much easier because they have only one password and username they have uh, to, to remember um, and they don't have to, um, enroll, uh, to log in into different systems during the working day. Um, the second point is what happens with the starting page after login? I'm a very often a friend of um, using the My Moodle site for this because a My Moodle site gives an overview about all courses I am enrolled in. And most situations, all the user says, okay, I want to go to one of the courses where I am enrolled to it, uh, in. And only in the beginning of a term, in the beginning of a semester phase, they have to register manually in some courses, and then they have to go uh, to the overview of the courses. Another aspect will be, it makes it for the administrators much easier if he is reducing the functionalities for the students and teachers on this page. Um, in the default setting for Moodle, it's possible that every user changes the look and feel and the elements on this page. We are uh, suggesting to our clients to reduce here the permissions for the users and to say, take away the permissions to change the settings of the page so that we have a same structure for every uh, for each user here, and um, the, 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 the administrator can make announcements here, and uh, it will reduce a lot of support questions from users, because uh, what we have seen, a lot of users uh, ask, have changed anything last week, and today um, they are coming to the page and say, okay, I didn't find anything here. And if they all of them have the same structure, they can't change it here. Uh, what our um, suggestion that this makes it much easier for all the people working with the system, and if this page uh, looks uh, in the same way for everyone. Um, course enrollment, and just another uh, element. Um, discuss in detail which processes of course enrollment should be um, used in your organization. Um, manual enrollments is a typical situation that a teacher, teacher is doing. If I have a, a student information system that has also the information about the courses that a student has to do in a term, then it makes sense that we get directly this information. Then the teacher doesn't have to organize manual enrollments. But there may be some exceptions, and uh, for those exceptions, we need this process. Guest access. Discuss in detail if you really need guest access in the courses. Our experience is that mostly guest access is not really used. Self-enrollment, same question. Um, is, self, is a wish that we student enroll themselves? Um, it can create a lot of confusion as every teacher is selecting the enrollment processes individually. If you have a clear policy, what are the processes for enrollment, and you have only some, only a few courses with exceptions, it makes sense to do it. What we like very much is uh, using the cohort functionality. Um, we have implemented for our clients a functionality that's people in um, companies like very much because what we do is um, we have a lot of information about the employees in the user profile. And what we can do is that automatically, based on an information in the user profile, cohorts are created. For example, there's someone working in the sales area uh, in the office in Berlin. Someone is working in the sales area in London and someone in New, in, in, in New York. And so we can have the, both of the information, the location, and the information of the department. And then we can say, okay, we want 
a cohort auto, uh, create automatically based on the apartment and another cohort based on the location or we can combine it also and then if there is a new location if there is a new uh, department automatically the cohorts are created and the employees are put it into the cohorts it makes sense if you have to create courses and course access for participants based on such information. You can do the same with the classes in a school or with, a uni with students in a university if you have the need that you select all, all uh, participants from class 8 um, in this term for an English course then you need only the information from the student he is in class 8 and then uh, automatically you have it. The English teacher is going into his course, says, okay, I, I need cohort enrollment class eight, and automatically all of the students are enrolled. If there are any changes in the profile information coming from an SIS system or anything else, um, then it's automatically um, changing the enrollments into the courses. This makes a lot of sense and makes it much easier. Think about what you really need, disable the functionality that you actually don't need and uh, use only the one that are relevant for you. Another one that is very great in Moodle, discuss about the course formats and the default settings for courses. The default setting for Moodle is uh, that the weekly format is set um, and there are 10 um, cell, um, uh, sections uh, created in, in, in the course. Um, is weekly format really the relevant format? Um, maybe for schools and university, a weekly format makes lots of sense and can be the standard. If I'm going near the corporate area, if I'm going in governmental organization, they need more the, the topic area. And so it makes sense uh, uh, to, to, to make a default setting here that covers 80% of the situations. Uh, and very often we define, okay, topics format will be the standard or, um, and, and we don't need 10 sections. We need only three sections because courses are very short and have uh, only uh, less element. And, Oh, only a few elements. Um, the other point is what we see very often that teachers don't go into the course setting and reduce the number of sections based to the, to the, to the, to the number they really uh, need. Uh, if they need more than 10, they will change it. But if they have only three, um, if they have 10 and need only two or three, they will not reduce it. And so the participants see in the course a lot of sections that are empty. Doesn't make sense. We have some organization that have typically courses that have only one element. And then it makes sense that also the default for a new course is a one topic format. Um, and then if you are creating the course, they are asking what is the activity you want to, to, to use there. So discuss what the typical situation is and make this for the, to the default. And this is here the point in the courses that you can define the default setting. And each course that is cre created in the system newly will have these settings. Um, and this makes it much easier for the teachers there. A similar situation with the blocks in courses. My personal feeling is that the default setting for Moodle puts too much blocks into the courses and lots of teachers doesn't delete or hide um, uh, the blocks they are not using. I've seen very often courses that have no forums and no forum activity, but the blocks for the forums are visible. There is not very much running with uh, content that is added during the course because this is a, uh, a course that is running uh, all the time, maybe in a Microsoft Office course. And um, then, the then, the, then the course is set up on time and it's now running for three years and every year 
do that. Every employee can access to the course um, if, if it needs the information, but the course is not changing continuously and there's not a group that is um, working in the course continuously together, then um, a lot of this blocks doesn't make sense. If I have a typical course in a university or in a school, maybe different. And so, uh, go to the questions I have here. Do you use communication? Do you enhance news during the course? If I have a blended learning course and the teacher sees the students in the physical classroom um, every week three times or of, more often, then he will do the actual enhancements more in the physical classroom than in the LMS. And if this is a reality, then he can put out some of the blocks and so on, and um, reduce it. What's very great in Moodle that if you ha uh, take out all of the blocks uh, on the right side, for example, the content is moving in the free place, uh, in the free area, and um, so it lo looks much better. Um, we have decided in the company now that all the Moodle system we are uh, installing for the cl uh, clients have per default only the navigation and the administration uh, blocks. And sometimes clients decide, uh, let's hide the navigation block also so that we have a minimum of functionalities because teachers and but also the students are confused on a page where they see too much information. And it makes it much easier with the system if this is reduced. How can you do this? The administrator, or system administrator who has access to the server can define in the configuration PHP file, config PHP file, how a new course in a special course format looks like from the side of the blocks. Which blocks in this, which order is their set? And there is a, um, a configuration PHP file also in the root area of the Moodle system where this information you can see here are listed and you can copy this into your um, running config PHP file um, and change it there so that uh, this are, is a configuration uh, that is used for, e for uh, in the area of the blocks uh, for each of the cores that is created. If you change the settings here in the config PHP file, it doesn't change anything in actual existing courses, but every course who is uh, created new has the new settings you are defining, not the standard of, of Moodle. It makes a lot of sense for us since years. Let's stay here at the blocks. Um, Moodle has a lot of blocks. And um, if you are checking the list uh, in some of the systems, there will be more than the 30 blocks. Uh, some of them are only available in special situation, but a lot of them also teachers see there. I've tried sometimes to ask experienced user, can you explain me for each of the blocks what the functionality is? And most of them failed. They said, okay, I, I have never used this block. I didn't know what it's doing. And then it makes sense uh, to look through the system. If you have a running system, have a look on the um, plug-in blocks area. And there you can see in the list how many instances of a block is in use in your system. And I think all of the blocks that are not really in use. You can hide in the system. That doesn't make, make uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the, the, it is deleted uh, in the programming code, but it's not available in the courses. And if there's a situation three weeks later, three months later, or a year later, and the teacher is asking for a functionality, it's not a problem to enable it again. But you can reduce this list, and very often we have only five or six uh, blocks that are really in use, active in the courses.
And this is the overview. You can see here the instances in the second column. And uh, if you want to hide them, it's very easy because in the plugin blocks area, it's also the same in, in other plugin areas. Click on the hide uh, area to hide a block. And from, from this moment, a teacher cannot ex have not access in the course to this block. It's really helpful. Um, Similar to roles, um, what, uh, um, how are you working with the roles? Which of the roles are really in use uh, and why? Um, sometimes I make the suggestions to reduce the number of roles. Sometimes I'm doing the opposite. I'm suggesting add and create additional roles. And the idea behind additional roles is um, to uh, cover special needs, but also to cover the needs of users, especially teachers with different experience. If I have a teacher who is starting with the Moodle, uh, it doesn't make sense to give him access to all of the functionalities, to all of the activities and resource types. And what you can see here in the screenshots, uh, the screenshot in the middle on the right side here, uh, you can see the list of activities and one is a full list and, and only a part of the full list and uh, the other one is on a reduced list. And what's interesting in Moodle with the configuration and the role that you are able to define, maybe a trainer, a teacher who is starting with Moodle and has only a few functionalities, but also someone else who is trained, who has an overview about the functionalities and um, he really needs them for, for designing the courses, then it makes sense to give him the full access to this. And um, let's think about how you can do it. If you create a new role, for example, a starting teacher role, then you can reduce the functionality of add instance permissions in the role model. And the add instance means he is not, if, if he's disabled for him, he, is, he doesn't see it in the list of activities. If another teacher has added into his course uh, this functionality, uh, then the teacher can also use it. Uh, but he is not able uh, to, to, to add such a functionality here. Um, I know sometimes it's a little bit critical here, but we are discussing this very openly with, with the clients, um, how, how they can work with it. Um, the by many will be critical. Critical mostly it is if uh, there is no communication about the different roles and an, exp an experienced teacher and a not experienced teacher starting one um, are in discussion together and uh, they, uh, they, they, they say, oh, your Moodle system looks quite different than mine. Why did I have these functionalities? Um, if it is open and it is clear and the teacher can select what will be the uh, permissions I have here, um, then it's not a problem. That's our experience here. Reduce functionalities for some of the teachers and they will be happy very often. Similar we can do with the permissions in the settings blocks or the administration blocks. What you see here are different configurations there. Um, on the left side, the standard configuration, here with your German screens, uh, and the other ones are some that are, have uh, reduced. Is it really required that um, backup, import, restore, reset of, of courses? Every teacher has access to those functionalities. My experience is, if I'm asking most of the teachers, most of them said, okay, I have never worked with this functionalities. Our system is creating backups daily. Uh, I don't have to cover it. Import, um, I don't know what import is, for example. Um, and so it makes sense to reduce this. Another point will be lots of teachers didn't understand really what filters are. And is it relevant that they see the functionality here? I know that 
different answers can come to it, but in an open discussion, you can decide what is relevant for your uh, system and you can say, okay, we disable this for some of the users uh, or completely for all teachers, but managers and um, administrators have access to the functionality so, so that they can activate it in a course if a teacher is asking. <laughs> Such suggestions also uh, work different in, in different types of organization, complexity and, and size uh, of organizations. Um, and uh, it depends all the time on the individual situation. Here you can see how you can do it in the roles model, search for the functionality and uh, disable the functionality for a special role. It's a very simple process. You have to do it one time. My suggestion to all the things you can do with the roles is that you at first create a new role create a new role based on the existing one, make the changes, and then transfer it to a standard role um, because you don't break anything in the system then, and you have a play field, uh, a playing area, uh, a sandbox, uh, you can uh, work with them and try it. The second um, uh, I, uh, suggestion here is um, create a new user, Give him only this one role in a context and try if it's working like you have thought about it, what's what your think, idea is. Um, and then you can be quite clear. Otherwise, if you are doing this at administration, to, uh, administrator, um, then some of the roles uh, from the administrator role will be transferred also to your new role and uh, it will be confusing for you create a new account, put, uh, give, you, give him only one, um, one permission or one, one role and test it with this uh, user account. Role assignment, similar situation. Um, role assignment is not very often uh, used um, uh, on, and uh, what only for, for students if, if manual enrollment is relevant and so you can reduce the list here and as a role administrator, you have a very, very easy to use um, overview about it and where you can change it by one click. The switch between roles is a similar question. Uh, who is using this functionality? Uh, my experience is not very much, and uh, if yes, then most of the time it's uh, completely okay to offer a switch to the student role, but not to the other one. Sometimes may be relevant if you have guest access um, that you say, okay, switch to a guest view, um, but uh, mostly a guest situation uh, will not be a relevant information if you could, uh, do it in this way. So, settings in a similar situation, like the role um, assignments, um, there's a tab on the same page that you can go to the role switch and it's the same process of, of changing this. Some other things, question types. Moodle has a lot of question types, but um, a lot of question types are, all in, uh, are not in use in most uh, organizations. Especially what I have, uh, my experience is that the calculated question types, especially the, 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 the details there, are not used very often. Um, what I don't like is that the order of the questions um, and that question types that are not in use are visible here. So. I suggest that you run through the question times and define in the list what, oh, one moment, where's a, no, I, th I thought I had a screenshot about it, um, uh, that you define what of the question types should be active and what is the order um, of, of, of the question times. 
Um, uh, from my experience, multiple choice questions are used mostly. And um, then you can put it on the top of the list and the other ones um, order uh, below. Um, and so it's easier for the users to use because most of the teachers who are uh, creating a new question for a quiz um, are starting to reach from the top to the bottom. And if they find the question types they are searching for on the top, they can work much, uh, much quicker. Yes, the question order is something you can define in the plugin area. And um, that was a screen I was just searching for. Here you can see it in a similar way for the assignment types, where you have the, for the submissions and the feedback area that you define what is available and what is the order. And you have a similar uh, overview for the uh, questions. I think, Joshua, that was the uh, element you are mentioning here. Um, what about the repositories? Um, even the repositories are very powerful and discuss with your colleagues how, what types of repositories should be used. There is in German schools and university is a very interesting discussion about uh, the question if private uh, data area uh, should be available there. Um, schools have a lot of uh, fear about it. Um, and um, uh, so in schools often it is disabled or only um, offered for the teachers. Uh, this is interestingly a uh, thing that you can do so that you can create a separate uh, system role for teachers and only the teachers get this role with the permission to a private uh, to file area. Um, and uh, discuss what uh, repositories uh, should be used and um, activate them, but disable the other ones. Um, filters. Mm. Yes, Iggy, it's German angst. <laughs> I know you have a lot of experience in your school time about this. Um, Filters are disabled in Moodle, but my personal feeling is that they are very helpful because they may, can make work much simpler. Uh, the activity linking, the glossary auto linking, the emoticons. Um, think about, uh, discuss with your clients, discuss in your staff um, what, how filters can help you uh, in the processes. If a teacher wants to remember the students that in the, the assignment uh, is, is due to next Tuesday, um, then he has only to write the name of the uh, activity and the students will see automatically a link. That's very helpful. Uh, the um, uh, option to create automatically a link if a URL address is in a text makes it much he very helpful for a teacher and everyone else who is creating content to work with this. So activate the filters uh, and <clears throat> work with them and activate them also automatically from courses. But maybe there can be some situation where they are critical. We have seen some quizzes where um, links uh, to the to a glossary where term, uh, term um, uh, the terminology was explained were linked, and then the same quiz question it was asked for exactly this. And if the student sees the question, he has access to the answer via the automatic link. Uh, it's no problem to disable it for activity in the course, but the teacher has to know that is that may be a problem in some situation. Yes. So the editor, he is an old editor, the tiny MCE, but it's a, and, and also in the, in the old style, has a lot of functionalities. Not all of them make sense everywhere, but for both editors, for the tiny MCE, the old one, and for the auto editor, you can change the 
number of elements and you can also change the order of the elements. And the administrator can do it directly in the administration and settings for the editor. And so it makes sense to think about what makes it. Today, uh, we have the situation that in the default, uh, only the first line of the editor functionality is visible and you have to link, put, um, to click on the first icon to activate the second and the third line. This is very helpful today, um, but think about it. Is What is really in need? Um, for example, we have a lot of clients that don't have a need for the mathematical functionalities because they don't have any content related to this. Then it makes sense to reduce or to, to, to put uh, this functionality out of the editors. Others have um, the uh, interest to see some other elements and this is modular so uh, that we see very different configurations of the editor depending on the situation they have uh, in their organization. This is done here in the editor area in the plugin, but I don't want to go in details here. So I suggest that all the time with the systems, people think at first dot what we did we really need? What are our structures? What are our process? What are our typical situations? And then go to the system and make the configuration. Reduce functionality that you didn't use. Make it more flexible with the different rules. And if you see after some weeks, after some months, that additional functionality are required, you can activate them. This is not a problem there. So, I will be, I'm at the final of my presentation and I am open for your questions now. Um, use the chat for this. Gareth just remembered me in 10 minutes and this is now, I, I think we are very well in time. Hello, it's Gareth from the RO team. Just taking this opportunity to thank you, Ralph. A lot of people are putting questions in there. Thank you very much. A really packed presentation now. I was listening quite, uh, quite a lot intently. So much to take in. Thank you very much indeed for presenting. I believe, yeah, this is the first session. I think you're presenting this one again. So even better. Thank you for your time. Yeah, a lot there. Thank you very much. So. Any more questions here? Thanks, Bob, for the feedback. Um, the aspect is very interesting to say, okay, they want it simple, but they want all the functionalities. Um, um, if I'm starting the, train, the trainer session, um, I very often asking the people, uh, are you working with Microsoft Office or a similar uh, tool? Are you working with Excel? And most of the hands are rising up and then I'm asking how many of the functionalities you are using? And some say, okay, maybe 10% or mostly less. And some say, no, no, never more than 5% of the functionalities. And then I ask you the second question. Um, what are you doing in this situation with the functionalities that are there, but you never use? And they tell me, I ignore them. And I say, okay, can you do, if you can do it with Excel, can you do it also with Moodle? Yes, and uh, this is then the point. But to have too much functionalities for someone who is starting with a platform will confuse him.
Yeah, interesting. Interesting idea to have a special role of a question master, uh, Andy. Um, depends very much on the structure of the organization. And uh, if I have a central person who is organizing this, um, or I have only a few of them doing this, then it makes sense. Uh, for me, it makes a lot of sense to organize questions on a, um, a category level or on system level. Uh, and we are doing this for several clients. Um, but it depends on the situation. Who is creating the quizzes? Who is editing the quiz questions? Is this each trainer by itself? This is a typical situation in a school. Um, but in a company, it may be different. You know, did I miss a point um, which is about the standards? Ah, okay. Um, I don't, I don't. I, um standard makes sense um uh, standard makes sense and we we use it also often um and creating template courses and um handle them like a library so that they have a hidden category of courses in the library and only teachers have access um uh, and uh, they can copy such a course and this may very be very helpful if we have a similar structure uh, for for courses and only the the content is changed but the structure is prepared uh, makes sense it's a good idea but it's not okay for each uh, type of organization Okay, thanks, Maureen. Okay. Joshua, the suggestion to um, offer special uh, question types only for the math uh, and uh, science uh, teachers um, and not for the uh, language teachers. Um, maybe it's a good idea, the first few, but I'm, I'm a little bit in doubt uh, that um, you can handle it uh, afterwards very well. For example, there may be some teachers who still are teaching English and also mathematics. Um, and how will you organize this? So we are coming to the point that you are combining now um, topics they are teaching with the roles. And um, sometimes it may work uh, and will be helpful, but I'm a little bit in fear that there's a lot of organizational and administrational access for you, or um, work for you. <laughs> okay. I th think we can come to an end for this presentation here. And I will stop the recording now, but we can have the discussion running